Hello everyone, this is Tim Wilmot speaking. Thanks for joining me today for my demonstration of a watercolour painting from start to finish. You might have seen from my website that this is a bit of an experiment for me. This is the first time I've done something like this online and it came about partly because a few people recently have asked me whether I do any tuition or coaching and because I'm not in their country location, I'm not near them, um, it would be impossible or cost prohibitive for me to go to them or them to come to me. So I thought, well, why not try and use technology, um, the web, a webcam and uh, an online meeting system that we're using this evening to allow me to see if I could provide um, some sort of live tuition with uh, fellow painters. Still, uh, it's not as good as being face-to-face -face with someone, but let's see if the technology works. Now, you as my attendees today, I'd very much welcome any feedback on any aspect of this demonstration, um, particularly the picture quality, um, checking whether the screen flickers your end, the sound quality, is it too loud, too quiet, please let me know, and your overall experience. Um, and if anyone knows that this has been done before, like a sort of online live demo of a watercolour painting, um, please let me know. I'd love to uh, see, how, see how they did it. So we've got about um, 45 people attending today. And looking down the list of names, I do recognise a few people, so a special hello to you. And many of you are unknown to me. I think a few people that are attending, or maybe, maybe quite, a, quite a few people attending, English is not your first language, so I'll try and speak as clearly as I can. Uh, please note, as you might have gathered, your microphone is on mute, so don't worry about any background noises your end. If you've got any questions or comments, uh, criticisms for me, um, please type those into the questions section. Uh, which is on your meeting control panel, and that's probably that, that window or box that's floating around in the top right corner of your screen. And I'll do my best to answer those at the end, or if we've got a little pause in the session, um, I might have time to go through a few then. By the way, uh, I'll, I'll only give out your first name when reading out a question, so uh, not to embarrass you at all. Uh, but if you really want to, I can actually unmute your microphone so that we can speak with, uh, with each other. So um, just, just mention that in your, in your question there. As I go through, I'll try and give out as much commentary as possible describing what I'm doing, but please excuse me um, if there's periods of silence, I'm probably trying to think what the hell to do next. Um, and I've got loads of, if you could see my setup here, I've got loads of cables and wires around me. It looks like a big plate of spaghetti, so hopefully I won't trip up halfway through. Also, this session is being recorded. After the presentation, you should receive an email, normally within a, a day or so, with a link to the recording, which, of course, um, you can view, share with other people. Uh, and also, also might try and get up on YouTube as well. Um, if I think the quality is any good. So, my subject tonight, um, which you might have seen on my website posting, there we go, is a local scene to me. It's a cottage and a lane near where I live. And I've painted the scene a few times, but mainly in the summer months. So, this is more of a winter scene. This photo was taken was taken on my phone a few weeks ago. And uh, I, I think, you know, for this basic demo, this trial, it's a pretty simple picture because we've got, you know, a very simple building here. Don't need to worry about perspective, simple horizon line, um, some shadows, which is good for watercolour. Um, what I'll probably do, try and do is change some of this around. So there's a little car lurking here in the shadows. I'll probably remove that. And um, we'll introduce some figures somewhere on the right-hand side there to, to balance up um, the house. So that's the subject. 
Okay, um, just for your own information, um, or sorry, just for my information, I'm using a, a Logitech uh, 920 webcam. Um, it's 16, it's 1600 by 800 resolution. It's on manual focus and my headset and mic is set to 50% sound level. So let me know when any one of this is too loud for you. I'll try um, and quieten down if, if I can. Um, and uh, I'll probably mute you also when I get my hair dryer out. Um, that's really is going to be too loud. So uh, I'll mute um, my microphone then if, if I can remember. Okay, so let's make a start then. So my paper is... Um, Saunders Waterford 300 grams or 140 pounds it's rough um, I'm using a, a 2B pencil and uh, I'll cover the colors um, when uh, when I start to lay the washes down lay some paint on the paper okay so let's try and do the preliminary sketch and hopefully this 2B is going to show up for you so first of all uh, I generally sometimes start from the left hand side here so we'll get in the the cottage here hopefully that's all coming up okay your end So we've got the side of the cottage. We'll introduce a little bit of a bush here. That hedgerow. And then the side of the road. The sort of horizon line. And the other side of the road, a bit of a pavement going on there. And then there's a bit of a grassy area here. Might actually introduce a little car over here. So it's parking behind the cottage. And then the shadow of the cottage is going to be like that. And we'll drag it across. The light's coming from the left. And um, going back to my photo, we've got a nice on the left hand side here which would be a nice left hand border so that's going to be somewhere over here and the shadow for that you know, across the road there up over the pavement and away and now for the background trees so we've got just bring in the photo again we've got some little background trees so some middle distance and some a little bit further away I'll probably not do them in too much detail tonight I'll just um, paint them in very loosely so let's draw in the rough outline of those and then the distant trees maybe a few closer ones down here somewhere something like that I'll introduce a telegraph pole there's a Sorry to keep going back to this photo here, but um, yeah, we've got that pole there. I might try and move it 
down somewhere over here um, instead of that little lamp post there. So let's put that somewhere. Here, say, and then some figures. So, normally with figures, I think, well, shall I have those coming towards me, going away from me, side to side? Um, so, I think I'll have them going away tonight. So, let's uh, draw in a figure. Let's see where we can. I'll have one person on right there. That person's walking away. Let's have a a friend. So something like that. Um, maybe they're walking a little dog as well, so we'll have a dog in. Uh, let's put a dog in there somewhere. Okay, and the shadow of the dog's going like that, and these shadows will kind of merge in there. That might work okay. Um, so that car is going to be, I think, all right there. That's the windscreen and the shadow underneath and this is going to be that's the chimney and a bit of dark shade on the side of the house there and we'll try and make a bit of a focal point with that bush there right that will merge in with that little shadow there okay so let's start with some washes then so the brush I'm using for this is a fairly big mop brush. And I'm going to start with the sky, keep the sky nice and simple. Just keep it to a basic cerulean wash. So hopefully that pencil sketch came out for you. Okay, you can see the rough outlines I've got there. So I'm just mixing up some cerulean blue now in my palette to show my palette, see if that goes in okay. There you are. What a nice clean palette. And let's put on on the top. Blue wash. Remembering this is the UK, so it's not ultra blue. Try and move a little bit slower, actually. I can see it's taking a bit of time to, the video is taking a bit of time to catch up with me. So we we'll come down here, get lighter as we get towards the bottom. That I'm adding a little bit of cobalt to this cerulean blue now. Getting a bit of a darker colour up there. Uh, 
a little bit darker on the right hand edge there. Okay, so let's now go over to the cottage roof and it's a quite a a reddish colour. Let's bring back the old reference photo there. So it's a reddishy brown colour. As I say, just ignore me if there's a period of silence here. Can't say much about mixing colours. So. There we go. And then more of a a cooler brown for the the walls of the cottage. while that roof is drying there we're dropping a bit of colour into it and then now let's um, do the road so sort of slightly bluish with a bit of aloes and crimson in it Do a bit of green. So I'm mixing up a bit of yellow ochre here with um, cobalt turquoise, a bit of viridian green as well. Then let's do the pavement. Down there like that. Should get my let's get a bit of paper towel here and just drop 
Try and make that a little bit lighter up there. Okay. Let's now add in a bit of green over here. Right, so I think that sort of looks okay. See this is drying a little bit. Let's um, make that car blue there. Okay, just might um, add a bit more textures of the grass there. Right, let's get my hair dry out. I'm just going to mute the microphone now. Hang on. Okay, back with you now. So, let's think what we need to do next. Might just put a bit more colour on the road. Something like that. Okay. Now let's do the background trees and I'm going to use fairly old brush here that um, only cost me about 50p and uh, I deliberately cut into it with a pair of nail scissors just to make a really jagged edge and I find it's quite useful for doing um, trees and foliage effects. So.
Now the colour I'm using here is mostly burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. We're kind of darken it up as we come down the bottom here. Be careful the top of that car. Then quite lighter at the back there. See, I'm getting a fairly random effect there with this brush. So, excuse me for not talking too much. Let's try and go a little bit darker in some places at the base here. Just looking at the audience view, hopefully you're not getting too much sheen or reflections there. So just change brush here too. And 
and medium. Got a medium mop brush here. Just starting to lay in some shadows there. Right. Okay. Now let's do, let's do, let's do the side of the house. We'll make it a little bit darker here to kind of make the roof, roof a little bit lighter. where that window is. Just have that in there. Come down to the a little bush. Just lay in a little bit of a shadow. And leave the house there. There's my window. There we go. Is this dry? Oh, it's almost dry. Okay, let's uh, try and dry that up with the hair dryer now. So just excuse me, I'm just going to might mute my microphone. Hang on a second. Okay, back with you. So just um, recapping with the picture, I think what I'll do is not overdo it, but I might add in some branches of the tree there. And we'll do that, we will do that with, um, might have a go with this sword brush here. Makes quite a nice point. Just see what colour those branches are.
Okay. Might be a bit too dark, actually. A few posts in there. Right. Okay. Now let's do the dark shadow on the side of the house. Let's try and get in some more contrast now. Um, so I will now use a synthetic brush. Here we go. Synthetic brush and we'll do the side of the house there. Right. So I'm using a little bit more blue as I come down and let's get in the windscreen of that car. There. And it's shadow. There we are. And now the shadow. of this house going across the road. So we're going to be going to be doing this shadow here and going up over the pavement, trying to suggest some the higher level of the pavement there, and then we'll come across the grass there. And then the shadow 
circles to cross it. That'll do. Okay. Let's just add a bit more form to the roof tiles. I sometimes hesitate doing this. Sometimes when you, or I find when, when you add lines to a roof, you lose the sort of looseness of it. It becomes a bit too detailed, but let's just see if um, so I'm using this saw brush again. Hopefully you can see that there. There we go. Right. Now, let's do that left-hand border. I'm going to do the sort of medium-sized tree there, framing the left-hand side. And that's going to be in a kind of dark. darkish green. I'm actually using now neutral tint and a bit of viridian. Come down to the top of the hedge there. There we go. Now we'll do the shadow of the hedge and we'll do, we'll go across the road and we'll have that um, shadow going across the grass there like the, the house shadow. So I'm going to use a slightly what size brush will I use now? Slightly bigger. Slightly bigger mop for this one. There you go. That size brush. And first of all, first of all, we'll just to soften the edge of the shadow at the top of the hedge, we'll just add in a bit of moisture here, there we are, and now Mix up some dark stuff again. Now I think there is actually a little gate in there. So I kind of suggest that and
There you go. And now, shadow across the road. Can suggest a little raised bit going over the pavement there. Shadow across the grass here. Okay. Just a few more shadows in the middle distance there. Right, let's do those two, these two figures here, and I will use, use my medium sized mop again, there we go, Figure number one. And then figure number two. And little doggy.
maybe a little lead or something. That. Let me just uh, suggest the side of the pavement there and let's do the telegraph pole so it's going to go kind of somewhere here going down That's the pole in, and maybe there's a few little cables running off of that. Something like that. Okay, right, I might just draw now a few dry brush strokes up the road. We're gradually coming to the end of this little demo. So some tire marks there. Hopefully that came out your end. Right, let's now, as a finishing touch, let's just add in a bit of highlights. I'm going to cheat here with a little bit of white gouache. So, Kind of going to get this straight out the tube. Maybe something on the top of the car there. And Something on top of these guys. And top of that chimney. Um, maybe something down the left hand side of that pole 
as it catches the light. Right. I think I'm done for this very short demo. Right, let's just check we've got everything there. Okay. Right, I think we are done. There's probably a little bit of extra bits I could do to it, but there we are. So, uh, Right, that's um, me done on the picture. So now I'd be happy to answer any questions you've got, any comments. Um, particularly, not the quality of the painting, um, but how you how you found this demonstration as regards the picture quality, movements, the sound. Uh, be very grateful of any feedback, you know, particularly as regards the setup I've got and the kind of um, technology um, I'm using as well. So let me just uh, sort myself out here with all these cables. Um, first question from, oops, first question from Angela. Are you stood up or are you sat down painting. Um, I'm actually for this one. I'm stood up most of the time. I I stand up when I'm painting. I just find it's a bit easier. Um, sort of standing back and getting a good good uh, good view of what I'm doing. Um, sometimes I'm I may sit, uh, but most of the time I stand. Okay. Um, Okay, Frank's. I think Frank's asking a similar question. Are you painting straight up or down or ah? The if if Frank the art if Frank you're asking the angle of my board. It's sort of at twenty five thirty degrees at an angle. So um, yeah, and the actual webcam is literally about um, I'd say about. 50 centimeters away from the paper and then my face is behind the webcam so throughout the picture I could hardly see what I was doing so hopefully um, it sort of ends up as a half decent sketch I'd, I'd call this a sketch not a painting um, Joe is asking are you using strong pigment on the figures uh, yes Joe it was fairly thick and it was ultramarine blue, uh, burnt umber, and a little bit of neutral tint. Um, Joseph is asking, do you paint on location in the studio or both? Very rarely, uh, because I've got a full-time job, Joseph, very rarely do, do I have the opportunity of um, going outside and painting as much as I'd love to. Uh, but most of the time, I'm indoors, and I... Whenever I visit anywhere or I'm out and about, I've got my mobile phone with me and 
take little reference photos there um, and uh, use that as a basis for future pictures, um, most of which, most of the pictures I take are completely useless for watercolors, but um, one or two you, 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 you think uh, make, make good subjects. Um, Graham, okay, Graham's asking how big is the paper? Oh, sorry, I did forget to say this is, um, this is 15 inches by 11 inches, so it's quarter imperial. Um, Joseph is asking, how do you decide if a particular scene or location will make a good painting? rather specific design elements you're looking for, light shapes, dominant colors, or leading lines, roads, pathways. Um, Joseph, I try and look for areas of light and shade. I try and have something that's, that makes a good composition, something that's interesting. Um, as you can see, um, I, I do move things around. Figures are very easy to, to move around and I do lots of practicing of, of figures and so on. Um, move cars around to suit the composition. Generally, I find with watercolor, if you've got areas of light and shade, um, especially if g going from the top of the picture and coming down, if you've got different areas, diff there's different bands of light and shade, that works quite well with watercolor and painting into the light or as as this picture is showing it's paint we're coming in from the left there the lights coming in from the left there so that tends to make for a more pleasing watercolor uh, Zlati is asking does your paper stay flat all the time um, this is actually fixed with some masking tape so I've got a roll of masking tape here and I use that to take the paper down the edges onto a piece of board or a piece of Corex board and uh, so this is just decorators masking tape and that keeps it fairly flat it does it does buckle a little bit but when you get the hairdryer out it all seems to flatten itself down again um, okay. Okay. Oh, Linda says, thank you so much from Vancouver Island. Crikey, it's on the other side of the world. Found the speed excellent, so was able to absorb each step. Thanks very much, Linda. Um, okay, Peter, a few more points there. Question from Enrique. Do you recommend to use a hairdryer? Uh, Enrique, um, I use it particularly when I'm rushed for time and when it's when the air is particularly damp or if I'm inside um, if you're outside painting then the paper dries much quicker uh, also the paper I'm using which is Saunders Waterford it does tend to stay damper a longer time and in the interests of speed today I use the hairdryer just to speed things up a bit. Okay, um, Frank says, I found the sound quality to be excellent. Video picture is outstanding. However, the movements were not smooth, as if I saw every 10th or 15th frame. Yeah, good point, Frank. Um, let's see what it's like when I post it up on YouTube. Um, who knows? Uh, I could see at the corner of my eye, I've got a little thumbnail picture of the audience view, and I could see some jolty movements there. And of course, when you're painting, I can't really slow down all the time, so I did as best I could. Um, hopefully, it was all right for you, friends. We'll see what it's like on, on YouTube. Um, question from Sandra, do you use the side of your brush a lot? Um, uh, yeah, sometimes doing the, the trees there, um, getting those different strokes. Um, generally, though, it's it's the pointy bit. Um, so just the side of the brush for leafy type shapes. 
Um, okay. So Frank's asking about the angle um, of my camera and <laughs> angle. Perhaps the angle would allow us to see the brush strokes better. Yeah, good point, Frank. Um, yeah, I've got, uh, if you could see my camera just literally poised above the picture, it um, doesn't leave many choices where my hand goes, where I'm going to see what I'm doing. Um, okay, question from Carly. I noticed you placed the card behind the house first in front, as the original reference indicated. Was this a composition alteration? Oh, yes, it was, Carly. Sorry. Um, yeah, where's my picture? Yep, so original picture. Car in the shadows there kind of didn't do anything for me and so I thought well move it back and then I can have a bit of highlight on the top of the car and also it exposes that little bush there um, which I could have made actually a little bit brighter um, but adding a bit more a bit more of a focal point perhaps um, so I stepped out for a few minutes. How dare you, Carly? You should have been attending all the time. Uh, or on other paintings, do you often alter your composition from your reference? Yes, I do. Change things around. Um, of course, trees, um, bushes, they can be moved around. Generally, I try to keep buildings as they are, um, but, but things like people and cars, they're constantly moving around and got to... Um, introduce those to help the the uh, composition. Um, Russell's asking what are your main watercolour influences? Um, not sure if you mean well I like loose I like loose painting so um, yeah there's lots of influences out there I've, I've been painting a long time and I I've been on a couple of water watercolor painting holidays where you share sort of tips with other people. Um, Ian McKendrick's asking what weight of paper you're using. Uh, this is 300 grams, Ian. Um, Nacho says, very good demonstration. Tim. How do you get the dark black? It was a bit of neutral tint. If you mean the the tree and the side of the house that was sort of neutral tint, uh, maybe 50% neutral tint with, I very rarely would use neutral, neutral tint on its own. I would mix it with um, maybe a blue or a, a viridian green if I'm doing some really dark trees there. And it went on fairly thick as well, Nacho. Um, Peter... Uh, Ask, I also wonder what quality brand colors you use. Uh, they're wind, I'm using Windsor and Newton watercolor paints, but I sometimes use a few others. If I find any retailers offering a special offer, I'll try them, but generally it's Windsor and Newton. Um, Joseph is asking, Shad shadows seem to be really important in your landscape paintings. Do you prefer early morning shadows or late afternoon? Is there a difference to... Oh, let me ask, answer that question first. Um, don't really mind. Uh, probably most of my... I guess a lot of my photos are taken later in the day, <laughs> um, not getting up at the crack of dawn. So maybe a lot of my paintings are late afternoon shadows there, Joseph. Um, is there a difference, another question from Joseph, is there a difference to the colours you would use for early morning versus late afternoon scenes? That is a very good question. Um, I don't think that, I look at the shadows inheriting, inheriting colours from around them and the material that they're on. So, um, for example, with the road, it was very cool and then more of a greenish shadow as I came onto the grass there. So 
Um, yeah. Uh, Jem asking, uh, saying, uh, like Frank said, very good, Tim. All pretty much really, only thing is, unless it's my internet access, image is a bit jerky. Yeah, I know what you mean, Jem. Um, as in a few few frames per second. I don't know whether that's, I did practice a week ago and I recorded the session. I was on my own and the the actual quality was very good. It was just like watching a video, but I don't know whether it's because of all the people on. Um, that just makes it a little bit less. The more people that are on, the less sort of bandwidth the system gives me. Not quite sure. I need to investigate that. Um, Enrique says, excellent video image reception in Spain. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you very much, Enrique. Thank you to you too. Uh, Joe says, thanks very much, Tim, from the great state of Texas. <laughs> uh, thanks, Joe. Uh, Peter, you don't wet the paper before you start painting. No, I don't, Peter. It's totally dry. Um, although sometimes I might, if I was doing a particularly cloudy sky, I might do some random dabs of wet paint with a big mop brush and then when you go in with the clouds it um, introduces a nicer effect. But generally, no, don't wet the paper. Um, Pedro is saying, very interesting demo. I like your wrong brush for painting the trees on the background. <laughs> okay, Pedro. Yeah, just any old brush. And, um, you know, this, this brush here for doing those trees. Uh, the actual line there looks, looks, looks a bit like the New York skyline when I finished with it, when I butchered around with it a bit. So um, take any old brush there. And Tony is saying, do you have a center of attention in mind before you started? Uh, I tr yeah, I try to think more of a focal point. Um, obviously, as most people would say, it wouldn't be in the center of the picture, be slightly off to the side somewhere, but it could be a dark figure on a light background or a light figure walking towards you with a dark shadow behind them, or it could be um, the, the, the roof of a car catching a catching some light or as in my picture maybe the eyes tend to go here um, where the um, where the bush is there perhaps that might be a focal point um, Jem's asking Tim what was the breakthrough moments for you <laughs> probably when I finished um, I, th I think the I think the most crucial, the two most crucial things for me when I paint is choosing the right subject. Most of the, what I would call my better pictures are when I've chosen a, a good subject to paint. And then secondly, the preliminary drawing, making sure the drawing is, it looks okay and the perspective is okay and the, the figures are all right and they're all, they're all kind of scaled correctly. Um, that would be getting it right there. Um, Graham says, if when you do another demo, please could you demo your technique for reflections in water? I think they are very effective. Okay, thanks very much, Graham. Uh, that would be, uh, if I can try and sort out the video, then yeah, maybe Graham, I'll try another, another demo in a month or two's time. Um, let me just... Uh, try and make it better and um, yeah if anybody's got any tips by the way um, feel free to email me um, Timothy Wilmot at gmail.com um, yeah any any ideas for a future topic uh, that would be gratefully received um, Peter is asking, is the natural light in the UK good for painting or do you prefer the sunny south of Spain? Well, that's not a difficult question, is it, Peter? So, <laughs> um, but they, they're they both different. I, I find um, I actually quite like doing 
I've got a closer relationship maybe with subjects in the UK because I'm constantly looking at them. Um, and sometimes I might overdo a UK subject with strong light and dark shadows and they look like something in southern Spain. Um, but it's, it's, I just I just paint anything. Um, so yes, anything Peter. Uh, so Russell is asking, oh, who are your main watercolour influences? Uh, there's quite a few. Um, when I was younger, John Pike, an American artist. Um, Cotman, really old artist like Cotman, Turner. Uh, more modern artists like Alvaro Castagnet or Joseph Zabukvich. Um, they're, they're kind of um, the sort of loose styles. I'm not, I'm not for, uh, a sort of person that likes painting for hours on end or doing realistic painting or um, you know these, these paintings where you can't really discern whether they're a photograph or a painting. I think a painting should be uh, an, an art. It's um, you know you're trying to produce some artwork here rather than rather than rep replicate exactly what you see. So I do prefer that kind of looser impressionistic style. Um, Ian is asking, where are you exhibiting your work and will we be seeing you at the Patchings Art Festival later this year? Um, I hadn't given that much thought in. I, I, uh, that's a very good idea that you've got there. So um, I will investigate that just to see. I think it's uh, somewhere up in the Midlands. Isn't it? You have to forgive my geography. I'm based in, the Brist in Bristol in the UK. and. Um, yeah, I'd love to take a look at that, Ian. Thank you very much for that suggestion. Um, so, oops, uh, Peter, were you asking a question there about shadows? Um, so, so Peter saying, since you are talking about shadows, what do you think about the Swedish watercolor artist Lars Lerin? Ah, I've heard of Lars. Um, yeah, very good. Um, I think Lars is a very, isn't he a very realistic painter? The, the actual water is fantastic that he does. I think that's the one. Uh, thanks, Peter. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, Peter. Oh, do apologize. I'm mixing up. I'll look him up. I'll look, I'll look uh, Lars, L-A-R-S, Lerin up later on. Okay, thanks, Peter. Right, I don't think there's any more questions coming through there. So just to um, thank everyone. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks for your feedback. Um, hope to catch up with you all soon. Uh, keep, keep an eye on my blog if I'm going to be foolish enough to do this again. <laughs> and I will check out the video quality. Um, and I'm going to stop the recording very shortly now and we'll see what the old video quality is like. Uh, but thanks very much. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks very much indeed, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.